Thank you so much for coming to this bonus session. This is gonna be a fantastic hour all about a really cool piece of equipment, actually a bunch of pieces of equipment that will help you out as a landscape photographer. Now, I know you've heard of the platypod, but I wanna introduce you to the guy that invented the platypod. Dr. Larry T, Larry Tiefenbrun, invented the platypod, and I met Larry years ago at a trade show, at a Photoshop world, and I was just blown away because you wouldn't think that such a simple device is so powerful. Dr. T, would you help us? First of all, just say hi, because I'm doing Hello all the talking. Everybody. Larry, it's great to be here. It's always great to be here with you. And thank you so much for joining me for our presentation today to the Kelby One Landscape, landscape a Conference. simple device. It's yeah, it's my pleasure. And I'm very, very happy to be a part of this. Now, we do have, you know, kind of a rough outline planned for the types of things that we want to go through. And this is going to be real value for landscape photographers. If you own a platypod or even if you're just thinking about getting one, you got to see all that the platypod can do. So Dr. T, would you first start off by helping our landscape photographers understand a little bit of what is the value of a platypod to a landscape photographer? Of course, of course. Everybody wants beautiful, sharp images. And in many cases in landscape, you also may need to do long exposure images. You need a tripod. And sometimes when you're traveling out in the landscape, it's difficult to drag around a, tri a, 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 a tripod. And that was my experience as a photographer, because I've been a photographer for 45 years, and love it just like most of you do I would hope all of you do otherwise you wouldn't be here and i want sharp images so when you don't want to drag around a, a large tripod or even a travel tripod or if you're going to places that don't allow tripods the platypod is always available so it comes down to three things portability portability and portability, and nothing is more portable than the platypod. So we also want to get photographers to think outside the box a little bit and not just take images from eye level, but rather to, as my friend Rick Salmon uh, would like to say, use your camera like a drone. Go high, go low, explore your scenery from different angles. When you start to get to low angle, all of a sudden you're bringing objects into the foreground which you otherwise would miss from eye level. And that's where platypod comes in really, really handy. Now I know some of you will say, okay, well I could take my tripod and I could invert the center column, put it upside, put my camera upside down, get it real low to the ground, but that takes time, it's a mess, and who wants an upside down camera? Platypod allows you to get low down to the ground. And as we go through this presentation, we'll show you how easy this tool is to use. It's great for tight spaces. So if I wanna get into a little nook or cranny, like the inside of a little cave, we'll show you an image a little bit later on where someone did that, our friend Dave Williams, and now I want to frame the image with the edges of the cave. Platypod allows you to do that often in situations where you can't fit a tripod. The great thing about Platypod is you use it with your existing equipment. And we'll get that into that a little bit later. How you can take if you have a spare tripod head at home or if you just want to take your tripod head off of your tripod. Well, you can mount it on a platypod easily because our system is universal. The setup is super fast and it's durable. Now, platypods are made out of aircraft grade aluminum, super strong, you can't bend them, and the bolt that holds your tripod head is made out of titanium. It is punched right through the plate and then welded neatly and cleanly in place and this will last 
Nothing in here rusts, and it's a tool you'll purchase once and hopefully have for a long time. The last thing I want to just mention about it is that it's super adaptable. Now, you might say, okay, look, if I take a tripod, I can use it everywhere for 100% of my images. But if I take a platypod, well, I've got to find a rock to mount it on or a tree to mount it on or some other object. Well, our users have found that tripods are good in about maybe 70% of situations because there's so many places you go where tripods are just not allowed or they don't get down low enough or they don't get into a tight enough space, as we mentioned. Well, I've had friends, I had one friend who went down to Patagonia, down in South America, on a five-day hiking trip debating as to whether he was going to take a heavy-duty tripod with his tripod head. And I said, you know what? Try the platypod, see how you do. He had a 30-pound pack that he was, he was backpacking uh, through Patagonia with and came back home and said, you know what? I took about 600 different images in those five days. And there were maybe only two times where I thought I might have had a better time with a tripod. And he got some beautiful images from angles where a lot of other people wouldn't have, would have, would have missed it. Dr. T, one of the things that I find myself doing all the time is walking around with my camera, with the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of my camera, and then that's attached, so I, I have one of uh, several platypods that I own. So I have like a little ball head here, I have my camera attached to the top and I walk around. This thing is ounces, mere ounces with the ball head. It weighs so little and I walk around with my camera with that on it. So I'm walking down a nature path. I've got these really cool places in the, in the town where I live that are uh, raised wooden pathways through the woods. And I put it down on the ground. I put it up high on the rails and I've got the little screw-in uh, uh, spiked feet. And so I'm walking around with it. I, obviously, you're never gonna do that with the tripod. You're not gonna walk around with a camera in your hand dragging a tripod on it. And this is something that, that makes the platypod so versatile for me, is that it's just so readily available and so lightweight. And if I felt like it, I can undo it for my camera with just a twist of the, the ball head release and then clip it on my belt. I mean, it's got the, the opening slots on the side, so I can just hang it on my belt and, and walk around with it. I can use a carabiner or any number of things. So I love that it's small and lightweight, but it's ready to go at a moment's notice. And I really love that I don't have to, I just kind of get in the habit of working with it always on my camera. And I just can't imagine doing that with a, a tripod, you know, having your tripod always on your camera. Do you hear people telling you they work like that? Yes, uh, a lot of them do. And we'll show you a little trick that if you want to, a little bit later, uh, that if you want to have it mounted on your camera and you want to keep the spikes in place, there's a way that you can do things so that those spikes don't uh, pinch into you or, or hurt anything. Um, the other thing, uh, Larry, I don't know if you've ever used these twisty bendy tripods. A lot of people oh, yeah. might say, why well, just use that? And why do I need the platypod? Well, if you notice, most of the bendable tripods take up about the space of a telephoto lens. Yeah, they do. And if you want to keep that in your camera bag, you're going to end up displacing equipment. The beauty of the platypod, even our larger one, is it's so thin, you just slide it into the side pocket. I could put it put it into the pocket of my pants there, just did it, and bring it right out, and it doesn't take up that space. You don't have to leave equipment at home. So I find that to be a big advantage, and just not feeling as tired at the end of the day from dragging around a heavy tripod. Now, if you do work with a tripod, like I do, you can actually work with a tripod and the platypod in conjunction. Now, are you going to show us uh, how to do that? I can. Let's dive in and just show people uh, what the kits are. I mean, many people here already have a platypod, so I'm going to do this kind of quickly. And okay. if you want more information, you can find it at our website at www.platypod.com. So, first of all, we have the Platypod Ultra, 
which is this smaller plate. This is great for cameras with lenses up to about 900 grams. Now that excludes super wide telephoto lenses, the 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lenses. Those have a big heavy front element and you risk some tipping. The other case where I would rather not use this is in cases where I'm on soft sand and I don't wanna take a chance of the camera tipping over. But if I simply wanna strap this onto a railing, put it down to onto the ground with most cameras, this is great, and the beauty of it is it weighs only 3.5 ounces. Now, the Platypod Ultra comes as a little kit in a box like this, and contained within the kit are the Platypod Ultra plate itself, plus a little carabiner so that you can carry it around on your belt like you were just we we're just explaining. Plus, it comes with a 20-inch strap, which is great for strapping onto railings, especially like those you'll see when you go over a bridge over a stream. And last but not least, our unique spikes, which allow you to obtain grip on rocks and concrete. Now we'll get into how to use the spikes a little bit later under our tips and tricks uh, section, but that's the Platypod Ultra. Platypod Max comes in a box like this and contains the Platypod Max. Now here, instead of a wallet to hold the spikes, we have a little box that magnetically holds the spikes in so they're really easily available. You just pull them straight out. If you have a very large piece, like some of the leveling units and things like that, um, might take up too much, much space here, you just click this off, pull it off, you can put on your equipment and put it back on. Uh, we'll get into the individual features of the plates a little bit more in a few uh, minutes. And last but not least, a little velour bag comes with the Platypod Max. Our other equipment that we have on our website for everyone to see is the Platypod Multi Accessory Kit. We'll talk a little bit more about the kit a little bit later, but just quickly, it comes with a larger strap to go around trees. It comes with a spigot adapter so you can put on lighting equipment and perhaps some other things. A reducer, so if you want to say put a little GoPro with a tripod adapter on, uh, that'll take quarter inch devices, and a little rubber pad, which is really convenient, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Also, you'll find on our website, we have a little ball head uh, for those who need an ultra compact but super heavy duty ARCA compatible ball head, as well as a phone holder, because you might just want to take some behind the scenes shot or uh, take some uh, time-lapse shots, and this will mount as well onto our system. What do you say we get into our slideshow, Larry? Let's jump to it, and I can't wait to talk more about the, uh, the, the puzzle pieces that you can put together and solve all kinds of problems. But I think, as much as anything, people love the landscape conference that we're a part of, because of the gorgeous landscape photography. And so much, and you, you touched on this, so much of landscape photography, effective, quality, impressive, breathtaking landscape photography is the foreground. Not all the time, not every single image, but so much is the foreground. And when you have the kind of control that the Platypod gives you to get down low and really put the camera where it's capturing so much of the foreground, it, it is so much better, so much more effective than a tripod in a lot of ways. So if you would walk us through some of these images, the sample images that we have in the, uh, the PowerPoint. Okay, before I start, I just wanna make a shameless plug for my friend Scott Kelby's new book, which coincidentally just arrived today in the mail. It's called The Digital Photography Book. And this is going to be probably one of the most popular uh, uh, books on digital photography. It's all brand new. He's had this in a series before. But what's special about this digital photography book is page 79, where Scott says, take a platypod instead of a tripod. And he goes over the advantages of having a platypod. And I'm really proud of this. So thank you, Scott. <laughs> Everybody go out today and buy Scott's new book. If you don't use it, I'm sure you will give it to some uh, friend or a young person who's looking to delve into the world of photography. And this will help them. 
to get started. Okay, ready for the slideshow. Can everybody see that? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, the platypod ecosystem, and I like to refer uh, to it as such because it is a group of products which all work in harmony together and bring your own equipment into that harmonious symphony so that you can get shots that you might not have thought of getting otherwise. Our system consists of the Platypod Max and Ultra, which you might see in this, uh, in this photo, plus our accessories. Uh, we also have lights, which are a little outside the scope of this conference, mostly meant for macro, as well as a phone holder, which I showed you before. We spoke about portability. You can, as Larry said, just mount the, your own tripod head or one of ours on the platypod and just hook it on to the, a carabiner, hook it onto your backpack or a belt, and you can carry your equipment around all day like that effortlessly. By the way, we're going to talk a little bit later in the show about the two items at the upper center, and that is our new ball head, which is coming out next year, called the Platyball. We'll get to talk about that in about the last quarter of the show, so stick around for that. This beautiful image by Levi Sim demonstrates what I was talking about before. Levi was at a park, and Levi is a photographer out in Utah, now actually working uh, at the University of Salt Lake City, he was at this park, and the rules of the park are you can only use a tripod on the paths. Now that was pretty nice because many parks don't let you use a tripod at all, but okay. However, the image that Levi wanted to obtain was from way low down, just underneath the fence that you see in the right lower hand picture there. Well, they don't allow tripods, but places that don't allow tripods pretty much always, 99% of the time, they won't bother you with a, with a platypod. Another photo by Levi shows how if you're going out and about doing cityscape landscape photography, especially at night, you can get beautiful light trails, which have to be with a long exposure, yet the buildings come in tack sharp. There's no moving parts in the platypod. So once you just lock it down, it's gonna stay steadier than almost any tripod. And Levi just strapped his Platypod Ultra onto the railing of the bridge and got the image. Hilmar Smith is a Kelvy One Photoshop magazine contributor and actually a beautiful um, uh, uh, composition, a composite portrait photographer. However, she loves to go she lives in Orlando and loves to go over to Disney and take images there. And she got this image at, at Disney and wonder where you can put your platypod. Well, she found a railing or a stanchion there and just put it right on top and got this lovely image of the Tree of Life. Yeah, you're not going to be walking around a lot of places in Disney with a big old tripod. It's, it's <laughs> who wants to, right? It, it's <laughs> sure. awkward and this is just so much easier. Dave Williams, British photographer and also a, a Photoshop user magazine contributor, wanted to capture both the beautiful light in the sky, but when he toned down the image to capture the colors in the sky, this, the city below came out all dark. So then he lightened up a second image, bringing in the proper exposure for the town. And then he combines the images into one photo wow. using Photoshop. And you can see, again, see on the left how the sky is kind of dulled out on the pair of pictures in the, in the left, yet everything is brought together here and just simply done with a platypod, again, on top of a pole. Yeah, and that is, you know, such an important aspect to digital uh, landscapes is exposure blending. And 
you know, I, I know that we've even talked about that somewhat today in some of the classes. Exposure blending is important, and if you're doing things like HDR photography or other types of exposure blending, you gotta have the camera locked down. You're not doing a whole lot of that handheld, and you can do it so many more places in so many more ways with a tiny little tripod called the Platypod. You might have heard of this guy, Scott Kelby, and he too, uh, obtained an image in Scandinavia with just simply a platypod on a railing. Now, I don't know if you can see this, Larry, uh, but he's got something screwed onto the platypod in the right lower hand corner of the plate uh, in the image on the right, and that's actually his camera strap. <laughs> Larry, Larry Scott didn't want to take a chance of losing yeah. his camera, so he kept it uh, hooked up like that. And I just thought that was kind of cute. But the platypod is nice and stable. And as long as you don't do anything goofy, your camera will be safe. If you need to leave it on there for a while, then take one of our straps and you can strap it uh, around. Uh, in his left hand over there, you can see he's holding a, uh, a cable release. It's actually an intervalometer uh, cable release so that there would be no camera shake in this image. Yeah, and he was talking about bulb mode in one of his earlier classes where you get that smooth look on the water from the long exposure. And again, you gotta have a tripod, you gotta have a stable surface to put it on, and lugging a, a tripod around isn't always as possible as carrying a lightweight little platypod with you and then using a rail like that. Now, I know that my friend Deb Sandage uh, had a, uh, a session uh, earlier today yeah. on infrared photography. Um, I don't have one of her images uh, for this, but I do have some of her other images. Uh, but this was submitted to us by uh, Bob Coates, who is a fine art photographer uh, out in Sedona and also a teacher and lecturer for PPA. And Bob is, is now one of our uh, Platypod ambassadors. Uh, this landscape image was done with a camera that was uh, reworked for infrared. And it was simply laid onto a uh, concrete slab or shelf. <clears throat> and he was able to get this long exposure image with flowing water. Now this landscape image, believe it or not, was actually done indoors at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel in Nashville this past January at Imaging USA. Wow, I've been there. I didn't even realize that. That's such a great <laughs> image. Here's, here is a Deb Sandage image of the Golden Gate Bridge. Also, just to show, you go, you go on a photo walk. Uh, she was doing a class here demonstrating how she does. One of her specialties is twilight uh, images. And just look at this amazing image. And you get a lot into the foreground, as you were talking about here, but super sharp because she's using a tripod, which is, in this case, a platypod. Shamira Young is, um, is part of the Platypod team. She's also co-host of the Beyond Technique podcast. And if you haven't heard it, I do recommend very much that podcast. She's an editor for Skip Cohen University, which is an excellent uh, blog site. Uh, Skip, as well, is part of the Platypod team. And uh, Shamira is now the editor for Platypod, the new Platypod newsletter, which is debuting this week. And we will have a lot of great teaching points in that newsletter. I suggest that everyone sign up by going to platypod.com. And at the bottom of our homepage is a uh, sign up. So you can get that newsletter, uh, newsletter which we're uh, planning on publishing uh, once a month. Now, Shamira is showing here again how you can create foreground interest by simply going to a very low angle. And with nothing more than just putting the platypod on the ground, you take an otherwise dull scene and make it interesting. Again, Bob Coates, to demonstrate an interesting point that low angle makes your objects look bigger. Now, what's unbelievable about this is this waterfall over here was only six inches tall. Wow. It's actually this second little shelf that you see over here. How do you like that, Larry? That's incredible. It's, and here's, just, it's such a breathtaking thing because we, we always think about the waterfalls as being such giant uh, 
things in nature. And to be able to make that kind of image from a six inch drop of water and you know, the extended exposure, that's amazing. And the platypod is the only way you could really do this right. Jan Shannon is a Long Island based landscape photographer showing how just put the platypod here. I would recommend Max because she's on the sand. Just put it on the ground. You get that foreground sand leading you up to this beautiful sky. Bobby Lane is a uh, well-known, experienced New England photographer with uh, a tremendous expertise in commercial lighting, but also one of the most versatile and talented photographers and photography inst instructors uh, out there today. And I encourage you to look at some of uh, Bobby's work. You'll find everything from portraiture to landscape to commercial work, and uh, she's just amazing. And again, showing you how using the low angle, you can bring in these pretty little red flowers into the scene where otherwise it would kind of just be the rock. Now you have foreground, medium ground, background, which are the three elements of a great landscape well, shot. And we're also starting to get a sneak peek at something that you're gonna show in a little bit, which is those spiked feet, and they're, they're spiked on one end and rubber on the other end, is a way to, on really rough terrain like that with gravel going on, um, if we can bring that image back up on screen, you can see that the, the gravel is overcome Sorry. or handled by the platypod being on those multiple spike feet. So if you just had the flat platypod by itself, nothing else, it wouldn't have worked. And so you got- Larry, can you, can you see that okay now? Yeah, it came back. Yeah, that's okay. it. I can see it real well. Yeah, so, so the image on the right, you can see those, those feet take care of the issue that would normally be there with the rough terrain, the gravel. Next image is from Samantha Kennedy, another uh, Long Island photographer and uh, landscape photographer. And she also loves twilight images. And just look at the color, but again, notice foreground, medium ground, background and the composition just works so beautifully simply done with a platypod on the ground mark toll a lumix photographer and blogger located in the pacific northwest and mark is now bringing in these rocks as a point of interest now have you gone high up the rocks really would not have had this impact but look how he composed this so the space in between the rocks frames the reflection of the mountain off the water. That's and that cool. brings to mind, Larry, I, I know that you have some thoughts about reflections in your landscape photography. Oh, I do. I love uh, close-up landscape uh, or close-up reflections. And so when you were showing a few of these where there's some hard ground or some solid ground in the uh, very near foreground with your image, with your camera down low. My friend Rick Salmon taught me, and you know, I just never really thought about it. I'm always thinking, okay, well, I got to find a big area that has lots of water on the ground. Rick Salmon's like, no, you just take a bottle of water and literally pour out water right in front of your camera on a parking lot is what ex example he was showing at the time. The neat thing about that is that you get that reflection in the foreground because you poured just a little bit of water there. And you're not going to get that reflection if your camera is up a foot or more. But just the fact that it's down so close to the ground and a small puddle right in front of your camera lens reflecting the image of your landscape it makes for gorgeous images, and, and uh, I've, I've done a lot of tinkering since Rick Salmon taught me that. All right, Larry, I, I agree, and you know, Rick likes to talk about you can either take a picture or make a picture, and I guess if you bring your own water, that goes under the category of making a picture. Yeah. Next image is from New England photographer and instructor and close friend and advisor to Platypod, uh, Shiv Verma. And Shiv, this is just two months ago, 
went out to New Hampshire. He lives uh, not far from uh, Boston uh, and took the platypod on a long hike down to this stream and little waterfall. And we've seen a lot of Milky Way shots, but combining a Milky Way exposure together with a long exposure here for the waterfall. And a lot of people will do this with two exposures. Shiv is a master uh, at technique and was able to get this shot all with one wow. single exposure, low angled onto the ground with his Platypod Max and captures everything in one beautiful image. Well, and Dr. T, one of the things that I really appreciate is when you're getting these images from these professional artists, you get these behind the scenes images and you get to see what your snapshot from your cell phone camera would see versus what these artists are capturing and how they're leveraging their skill set and the platypod as a tool. Correct. If most, this is where the photographer's eye comes into place. Many people would go into these scenes and see nothing. A photographer sees differently. And that's really what makes, what makes us, us special is that we look at the world differently and we try to convey to others that feeling that we had when looking at the scene. Mark Jinx took a, a photo of this moonrise, and you can see the umbra around the moon, almost looking like a rainbow here, plus the reflection off of the ice, which give this, gives this such depth to the photo. Again, foreground, medium, background. There's a lot the of composition going on there. My friend Skip Cohen, who is the uh, CMO for Platypod, uh, Skip was also has quite quite a uh, amazing career. He has been the uh, United States uh, CEO for uh, Hasselblad. Uh, he was also the president of Rangefinder Publications and worked for Polaroid. Skip now has, as I mentioned before, a, tr a wonderful blog site. Uh, that really gives you a lot about the feeling of photography, and he does a lot of interviews. Um, so uh, I said to Skip one day, you know what I'm missing in my presentation? I need a lens ball. <laughs> Skip said, oh, I have one sitting around here. He went out to the beach, mounted this on a few conches, and you can see the behind-the-scenes shot on the right, and got this beautiful sunset image with a lens ball. That's cool. Taken on the west coast of Florida. Dave Williams, I mentioned this before. On the right hand, find a little nook and cranny with edges outlining your scene. And I think this was done near Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro and Dave captured, again, foreground, medium, background, it's all there. Bob Coates shows how you can use a platypod for a time lapse of a moonrise. How do you like that? Very nice. And honestly, you could get this image on a platypod just with your iPhone, together with our, home, our phone holder, too. Lizzie Gad. I want to spend a minute on Lizzie Gad, and then uh, I think we'll go on to the next section, Larry. Uh, Lizzie Gad is, well, describes herself as a self-portrait artist. She's taken a whole new take on selfies. So what Lizzie likes to do, and please look at her website, amazing ethereal uh, portrait photos. Lizzie likes to go out into the wilderness. She lives up in near the Vancouver area and set her camera down on a tripod, or in this case, a platypod, hook it up to an intervalometer set to take a photo every two seconds, and then she wearing a lovely dress will walk away from the camera into the scene and be her own model in the scene and take a look at the results. That is what such say, incredible like? work, such gorgeous work. And I've looked through her portfolio and I am so amazed at her talent. Just, just beautiful vision. Watch Lizzie. She's a young photographer. She is uh, a ready uh, I would say a star and certainly up and coming bigger star as uh, the years go come along. Uh, look for her name. She's going to make it very big here. 
So just quickly review, Platypod Max is for your larger cameras and lenses. Platypod Ultra is for the smaller cameras and lenses. Uh, we do have some kits and bundles. Uh, we'll show this uh, Ultra Essentials bundle in just a moment. And we also have another bundle for macro photographers that includes Max and some lights. Again, I'm not gonna go into this now, but Larry, I believe you have a little video on our website uh, describing this. So I'll encourage everyone to go to platypod.com and you can look for information on that. And again, for anybody who missed it the first time, here is our promo code uh, that is for our uh, Kelby One uh, Landscape Conference members. And this is good through September 15th. And let's come back. How'd you like that, Larry? I, you know I love these, these images and I love landscape photography and getting a chance to look at it from a different perspective. Now, I was gonna ask you, although we've already touched on most of this, I was gonna ask you about some of the things that are possible with platypods but, but I also know that we're running a little tight on time, so I want to jump straight to show us stuff. Show us oh. how the spiked feet go together. Show us the straps and the D-rings. Because I think people, certainly from the last conference, told us that they get a lot out of understanding. You know, we talk about the spiked feet, I've mentioned them, uh, but, but talk about, you know, both sides of the spiked feet, how they work, uh, that kind of thing, and the rubber pad and the spigot adapter. So if you would please go through and show us how this all comes together as the kit. So we'll, we'll do it. So what I'll do <clears throat> is um, I'll show you the individual things and then we'll describe the uh, Ultra Essentials kit. Good. That sound good? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go for it. All right. Spikes. Why do we need spikes? So here is, let's, uh, can everybody see the rock? Yeah, yes. we can see it good. Yeah. Okay. So here's a rock. And just to demonstrate to you, let's say you set down a platypod on a rock and the rock's at a little bit of an angle. Number one, it may slip right off. Sure. Number two, it can jiggle and make for an unstable photo. So we've included with every platypod a set of spikes this one has in it four spiked feet with pointed spikes on one side or you could flip it with rubber uh, rubber um, caps on the other side if you're on a more delicate surface and you simply put this down on your object now that may rock a little bit if, it, if there's four in place People say this isn't a tripod, it's got four feet. Well, uh, you could actually just use three of them and mount one over here. So technically, it is a tripod. Okay. <laughs> we also include these little round nuts on here, which help avoid any jiggle whatsoever. And now this is as solid as the rock. Even a travel tripod will not get you a more solid hold than this will, because there's nothing moving in here. Well, and I think now, one, of, one of the really important things people need to understand is you don't need tools to put this stuff together and take it apart. You're correct. showing those stabilizing little uh, ring nuts on there, and everything is grippy to the fingertips. So you can easily put things on, take them off, uh, put them away in the kit. Correct. Now, mounting on your tripod is so simple. The <laughs> bolt is embedded in here. There is no need to tighten anything on the bottom. All you do is you take a tripod head. I have here, this comes with the Platypod Essentials kit. This is a Benro Arca compatible ball head. Comes with a small Arca plate. It also has a safety mechanism. Read the manual. There's one line that describes how to get this off by just pulling it out a little further. But anyway, you simply mount this on here. I'm gonna switch cameras to show you a little, little closer view. Can everyone see that? Yeah, very good. Okay, so you put this on here, and once you've turned it once or twice, you take it and you tighten it. And our bolt here on the Ultra allows for 100 pounds of torque. You can twist this as hard as you want, then loosen the ball head, put it where you want it, tighten that, and now I'm taking this heavy-duty camera and putting this right on here and I've got an I've got an L bracket 
on this, oh, I'm sorry, I've got an L bracket on the camera, as you can see, so you can take portraits, landscape with one single bracket and just put it onto the quick release clamp and you're ready to shoot. And this is totally stable for only 3.5 ounces. Now, if you're using heavy, heavier lenses, or like I said, if you're on rock or sand, you do the same thing with the Platypod Max. And let's show you the, we'll show you the Max in a second. The other things I wanted to point out on here is, and Larry, I think you like the little icons here that, that explain oh, yeah. everything. But these show you what everything here is for. There's an icon of a carabiner so that you can simply put a carabiner on there and, and carry it. There is an icon for the tripod head, so you mount the tripod head here. But you can also mount the Platypod Ultra or Max right onto a tripod. And let me uh, go to the wide view here. All right. And I have here a monopod just to make this demonstration easy. Uh, let's do this with a uh, Platypod Max, okay? There are two holes in the center here, okay? And that is so that you can put this onto any tripod and stow your platypod right on your tripod. Well, how am I gonna use my camera? Well, that's very simple. You simply, you simply put your tripod head here and then you, let's straighten this out over here. You mount your camera over here. And now when you want to switch from eye level down to ground level, you simply take off the entire thing and put it on the ground. Now let's say you're on, uh, you're on concrete and you're getting a little jiggle from the pebbles in the concrete. Well, I could just pull out one spike and put it in the toe of the platypod. And what that does is it just gives me that little bit of grip and that's all I need and there will be no, there will be no jiggle. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I use all four feet most of the time when the spike feet are down. I just use three. So I use one in the front center and two in the back. But then when I have the rubber feet straight down, I generally use all four in the four, uh, the four different points. Well, Larry, would you like to hear a special tip? Ready. Okay. People who want to keep this, uh, let's switch to our slightly closer view here. Okay. Let's say you want to carry this on a carabiner and walk around with it with your tripod, tripod head on. And now personally, you might want to do this with your camera personally. I would keep, still keep my camera around my shoulder, and, but just carry this. Now, some people say, I'm worried about these spikes knocking into somebody. Yeah. Well, for a dollar and nine cents, head over to Home Depot and you can buy some quarter inch dash 20 cap nuts. And these ones are made of stainless steel and just screw right on over here and then you don't worry have to worry about scratching anybody with that so that's okay so <laughs> Larry so you like to do cheap cheap yeah, shot tricks yeah I do one. say the term again because everybody's gonna that that has a platypod and that has the spike feet you want the cap nuts so they're quarter 20 cap nuts and when you right walk the quarter in, inch refers to the diameter yep. and 20 threads per inch and th that's the standard uh, photographic uh, screw right so just mention quarter 20 and the people in the hardware store will walk you right there. That's right. All right, what do you wanna hear about next, Larry? Well, I had on my list that I wanted to talk about the rubber pad, cause I've got one of those. I use the little okay. rubber pad, the three inch spigot adapter and the, the disc riser reducer. And I think that one okay. gets skipped a lot and I use it all the time. Okay, so that brings us to the platypod multi accessory kit all right and i'm gonna zoom in a little closer so everybody can see okay 
And that comes with four items. It comes with the 36 inch strap. It comes with a spigot adapter so you can attach on flash equipment like umbrella heads. Uh, I even have one rigged over here, Larry, where you can a attach a super clamp oh, to cool. this and put a, uh, put a reflector on there. But that's a little bit outside the landscape, uh, so we'll, we'll leave that one alone. And again, a reducer so that you can reduce the 3 8 inch stud down to a 1 quarter inch stud which comes in very useful for flash equipment and I find a lot of people like to use it so they can mount a GoPro. Now all you need is a $3 piece, it's a um, tripod adapter for the GoPro which I think anybody who has a GoPro would probably want to have and then you can simply mount this here. And one little trick I think you and I talked about trying, let me go to, is if you have a backpack with a strap in the front, you could simply strap this onto your backpack and use this as a trail camera oh, right, that's right cool. on your chest. So it's versatile, and I think there's a lot, you know, a lot you can, uh, you can do with that. Now, other parts of the kit are the uh, rubber pads. So if you want to use your camera to take, let's say, selfies of your family you uh, on your car hood, just pull over to the side of the road with the landscape behind you, and you can put this on your uh, car hood or car roof and slap that on there. You remember those pictures of Ansel Adams with his station wagon yeah. with a platform on his car roof and he has his 8x10 camera with a tripod on here? Well, you can have your own little Ansel Adams set up for just that. And let's mention the straps. Yes, Larry? Yeah, please. So the trick with the straps is just one thing to remember, and that is to keep the black Velcro on the outside. So how do you use this? You go over to a tree, you strap it around. Now this is especially if you want to do time lapse or behind the scenes footage. You strap this onto the tree, black on the outside here, and then you just pass this through the double D rings, Velcro it down, and then once you've got that onto the tree, you take the Platypod Ultra, and using these arms, just latch it onto there, and then tighten the strap a little bit more. One other little tip that you can use is once you've got it tight, and you want it super tight, what you can then do is take a spike, pass it through, and give yourself counter pressure and that'll make sure that your camera doesn't move all day long. Yeah, that's cool. I've used, I've used those straps, both size straps, on benches, branches, and um, playground equipment. And also on poles, uh, telephone poles, things like that. It's, it's a really cool way to work, and you don't normally think, well, I can use this telephone pole as a tripod platform, but now you can, because those straps, the big strap, will go around a telephone pole. Larry, I'm gonna, just gonna take one minute, thank you for that. I'm just gonna <coughs> take one minute to quickly run through what's in the, um, in the Platypod Essentials kit, and then I think people wanna hear about the Platyball, okay? Yeah. So Platyball, Platypod Essentials kit comes with the Platypod Ultra, which is everything that you see here. It also comes with a Benro ball head, including an Arca compatible plate, but again, this will work with any Arca plate, and a phone mount. So if you put the whole thing together, you can put your smartphone, and this will handle even the large, uh, the large iPhones with a case and everything. And what's nice about them, it's just spring loaded. You put, you pop your phone in. It's got an aluminum metal stem here which will last a super long time and you can shoot both in portrait and landscape modes uh, with that. So all that comes together at a really great price and I invite you to go to our website, take a look. I think Larry you have a little video that explains that as well on our website. And are we ready to talk about Platyball? Platyball? Absolutely. Let's jump in and talk about the Platyball. 
the most upside down ball head I've ever seen. It will, it's an eye opening experience for photographers that have been using ball heads before. All right, well, thank you, Larry, for that intro. This is not the platable. This is actually a very fine, almost $500 ball head. And I'm using this to demonstrate why we needed to invent a new ball head and basically why we needed to reinvent the whole concept of the ball head. What are the issues, even with the finest of ball heads here? Number one, even, and I, I set up this tripod intentionally in a kind of lopsided fashion because I wanted to show that if your ball head is not perfectly level and then you try to level the top of the ball head. Now, let's mount, oh boy, a camera with a big telephoto lens on it, okay? And I think everyone would agree this is relatively level. Now you try to pan, and what happens? It starts pointing off level. Yeah, you can't, pan, why is that? You can't pan level. Correct, your panning is on the bottom. So in order to be able to pan properly, you've got, especially if you're out on rough terrain, let me bring my face back into here, <laughs> especially if you're out on rough terrain, uh, you've gotta adjust your legs up and down and up and down until your tripod legs are straight. Now, what have we done to, well, we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, three other problems. Problem number two is the knobs. Now on this ball head, we have one large knob for the main control. There's two smaller knobs, which I often get confused which one does. As it turns out, one's for adjusting tension, one is for panning. But when you're taking a picture quickly, you're fumbling for which knob is, which knob does which, and it's awkward. It can be much more simple. Now for landscape, admittedly, you have time, but if you do, children's photography like I often do, you got about 90 seconds to get everything lined up just right uh, before, before everybody, everybody is going in different directions. The other issue with knobs is that some of us do carry around flash equipment and if you have a plastic flash or an other plastic piece of equipment next to a knob and it gets squeezed in a camera bag, you may actually crack uh, the other equipment. So protruding knobs are a little bit of an issue as well. The other issue here is if you notice the level for the, uh, for the tripod clamp is on the top and it's never visible. It's either covered by your camera or your camera lens or it's nighttime and you can't see it or it's too high and you can't see it. So we wanted to deal with that problem. And last but not least, I kind of like like you, Larry, I like to be able to hang uh, my equipment off my belt. There's nowhere to do that with this with this ball head. Yeah. So in comes Platyball. Platyball is made in two flavors. This is the Platyball Ergo. And we also have another called the Platyball Elite. We'll talk about the Elite in a, in a few minutes. Now let's do the same little experiment and that is let's put the tripod again off axis we'll lock on a camera we'll level okay and now because our ball head is built upside down with the ball at the bottom and all the controls at the top including the panning head now with a very off level tripod set of legs now that is cool. Okay. And, and I think one of the things that doesn't come across until you start to explain it is those knobs are missing. How are you doing all this? <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of mechanics uh, that, goes, that goes into this. Plus, this is super strong. The, we've, you know, I, we've just tested our final prototype uh, for this to 33 pounds. We're only rating it for 22, but it'll hold 33 pounds. Now, locking this on, we've gotten rid of the knob for the, or lever 
for the clamp lock, all you do is twist and lock and you're in. And this is also fully ARCA compatible, okay? So I'm gonna take this off just so everybody can see. The controls are simple. The bottom button, you pump the bottom button to loosen the ball head. You pump the top button to tighten the ball head. And as you're pumping, you're feeling the tension. You don't need a tension knob because you will be able to assess the tension just from how hard you're pushing that button. And again, at the maximum, greater than 22 pounds of tension on that. That means if we hang this sideways, you can put 22 pounds here and it won't fall, it won't fall over. And so and, we've gotten it's rid really, of the knobs. Dr. T, it's really important yes. that we point out because I know a lot of people when they very first see this, they say, well, buttons, buttons means electronics. And so therefore this must be electronically holding the thing steady. I don't know that I trust this. What if the battery dies? You know, that kind of thing. Excellent point. Uh, there are no electronics involved. This is a fully mechanical system with a patented, uh, or I'm sorry, patent pending set of gears in here, which performs these functions and really does it just beautifully. Uh, other thing I wanna show you on the other side here is for the panning. Again, we got rid of the panning knob. Instead, we have this little wheel over here and that loosens it and just tightens it again. And you're not searching for controls. You put your hand on it and your fingers are right on the controls immediately you don't have to look at what you're doing, and it's single-handed operation. So you have one hand over here, you're not letting go of anything to grab a knob, so your camera's not gonna flop over. You have your other hand, your right hand is on the shutter, your left hand is on the platter ball, and it just works great. So we only have two minutes left to go, Larry. Let's show everybody the platter ball Elite. And here is the Platyball Elite, and I'm going to bring in my close-up camera here because I want everybody to see what this does. Well, if you remember, we spoke about how the level is never where you need it to be. And by the way, I'll just quickly mention, Platyball also comes with the world's first round ARCA disc. I so know, that that's, so cool. this, that's so mount cool. Mount this on your camera, uh, you can just spin it on in place, and there's no tools needed. But let's, let's show you this. Platyball includes the world's first electronic level. With the level, you simply turn it on, and after it goes through its startup routine, you just adjust it left and right, up and down, until you match four arrows in the center, and then you're perfectly level horizontally and vertically. Now, let's say you only want it leveled horizontally but not vertically you want to tilt it up or down that's fine too here again just match up two horizontal arrows or if you want to go up vertical again just match up two horizontal arrows it works in six different directions so you can turn it left you can turn it right it'll still work you can mount the whole thing upside down it'll still work because it adjusts for each position and I mentioned before we love to be able to hang our platyball off of a carabiner. So we've got little carabiner slots over here. And there you go. Or as they say in the land down, un down under, Bob's your uncle. Larry, <laughs> did I miss anything or did we I, get any? I think you questions? nailed it. That is, it's incredible. I've had it, I've had hands-on now. I don't have one now, but I've had hands-on with a prototype. It is such a different experience. And I've owned, and I do own, a lot of different ball heads and a lot of Arca Swiss plates and ball heads. And this is just such a different experience and it's so natural feeling in your hand. And the thing that I liked about it, and you did touch on it very briefly, and that is when you're making the changes, I'm one-handed making changes. I've got a glove on or whatever. I'm, I'm pushing the thing to release the pressure and I'm not worried about my camera tipping over, falling over doing anything like that, it's in the palm of my hand. So I'm not double hand holding it in order to be able to get what I need done. I can do it with just one hand. It's, it's a very different experience from a ball head and, and it's gonna change the way a lot of people work. You know, I believe that once people start using a platyball, they're never gonna wanna go back to anything else because it's such a pleasure, it's so intuitive to use. And yet, 
even though it's a really pretty unit and we thank Hilmar Smith for this, uh, for this uh, what we call the Hilmar Smith red color, uh, it looks like a race car. And I'll tell you, the quality we are putting into here is amazing. And I think people are just going to be so impressed when they get their hands on this. This is going to be available spring of next year. Uh, keep your eye out for it. I wish I could deliver it earlier, but we've been super careful about tweaking and getting this just right. So when it comes out, this is going to be a five-star product all the way. You know we've consulted with lots of famous photographers. People have tried it out. We've taken advice from everybody, and this is just going to be a perfect product. So as we wrap up, the two places people could and should go are platapod.com and plataball.com. Am I right? That's correct. And could either way, you'll find us. And, and please, uh, we hope everyone will take advantage of the promo code. And what can I say? Thank you all so much for spending time with us. We miss the Photoshop live conferences where we see everybody, all our friends out there in person, and we hope those come back soon uh, after our nightmare is over. And uh, I look forward to meeting all of you in person. Thank you. Dr. T, thank you so much for unpacking some of these amazing inventions you've come up with. We really appreciate it.